Hi, Todd McKinnon, Automation Specialist with Werner Electric Supply. Welcome to our Automation Learning Series. In this series, we'll bring you the latest automation technologies, products, and how-to videos. I'm going to quickly try to set up a video showing how to start a Studio 5000 program from scratch. I'll start by just hitting the Studio 5000 program, say new project, and in my case, I'm going to pick a 5380 processor, the 5069L340ERM processor. We'll just take the defaults and hit finish. At this point, it brings up the screen and you can see that it's a 5069 L340 ERM processor I'm using version 30 of the Studio 5000 software. First thing I'm going to need to do is add my I.O. modules that I'm going to be using. The IB16F. Give it a name. And I'm just going to take all the defaults. I can create the next I.O. module, which is going to be an output card. And again, I'm just going to take the default settings for that. I have a third module in my demo. And the third module I have is a universal analog card, it's kind of a cool card because I, that one can be an RTD, a thermocouple, an analog in, a, a voltage analog in. You can configure each channel however you would like. Again, I'm just going to take the defaults for that card. And then the fourth module I have, I'm not going to do any programming with, but it's a high speed counter card. So I will that, add that one as well. Take the defaults again. And then I'm done adding my IO. At this point, uh, the next thing that I'll be doing is I'll go up to my main task, my main program, and this is where I add my ladder logic to the program. Oftentimes the first thing somebody does is they're going to just jump to another subroutine, so uh, we'll set that up as well right Before I jump to the subroutine, I need to make the subroutine. So I'll just call this uh, buffer IO. It's going to be a ladder program. Say OK. Now I'll go back to my main routine and the first thing I'm going to do is set up a jump to subroutine and now I can select that subroutine. In this case I'm just going to make a buffer I.O. module because uh, control logics, compact logics, they are asynchronous as far as the way they scan the I.O. I'll set up a buffer I.O. subroutine so that then I will just reference the tags that I create within the buffer I.O. subroutine for the rest of my PLC programs. Buffer routine, I just put a few rungs just to show you how you would do that. Basically what I'm doing is this is an IO module that I'm getting from this slot right here and I'm going to say okay whatever this is hooked up to I'm going to give it a tag name. The tag name is going to be called motor1 underscore start push button PB. Um, I'm going to do that for all of the inputs in my program. Um, if I have an analog input for instance my IY4 is an analog module I'm going to just do a move and take that input word, um, the first input point in that module, and I'm going to have that go to something I call tank one pressure, and I make that a real tag in my controller tags. And similarly for the outputs, I'm going to 
give myself, let's say it's, I call it part eject for my first output point for this module here. Maybe compressor one is going to be the output that I'm turning on with this IO point. So just kind of to show you how I did that initially, I can just go ahead and grab the examine on instruction. And what you do is you just pick which input you want to select for your data. And I'll just pick another one in the card. And then I'm going to grab the output instruction drag it here and this is where I can create the tag and maybe this one is uh, conveyor one start I can make these up to I believe 48 characters long typically you're better off not getting too carried away with the length that you make in these tags um, but you can make them uh, up to 48 characters. One thing I also like to do is start out with a capital letter and every place you're going to another word. For instance, I'm going conveyor one and then start. I capitalize the S for start. It just makes it a little easier to read the program. So if I'm making this tag, it hasn't been created yet in my controller, so I need to right click on that and then it'll, it'll say make a new tag so it's new conveyor one start it's just going to be a boolean tag and I'm going to say create that I can create tags in a number of different ways this is an easy way to do it as you're going along with your programming and the other way to do it is you can go into your controller tags here and these are all global to your processor and just edit tags here and create them all ahead of time if you'd like to do it that way as well. Now that I've set up the subroutine for my IO buffer, maybe I also want to add another routine and we'll just call this conveyor ladder. It could be anything. And just like I did before, I'm then going to do another jump to subroutine to go to that routine after it comes back from the buffer IO routine. So I'll right click in here, add run. I can just type the JSR if I want and it will start putting it in right here. Hit the carriage return, then I can just drag this, pull down and say go to conveyor ladder. Now essentially, the ladder that I'm going to do the rest of the time is just within the conveyor ladder. So I'll double click on that and this is where you just add whatever ladder logic you're going to do to your program. Obviously you can make as many subroutines as you would like, you can make multiple tasks, you can make them time tasks, but for the purpose of this video is just to kind of get you starting the program from scratch and being able to put in some ladder logic. So in the conveyor ladder subroutine, I just put in some quick basic logic. Um, you can have timers, counters, any type of comparison instructions. These are considered Boolean or bit level instructions because they go down to the bit level. Um, your timers in a control logics, you can name them whatever you would like. In this case, I selected timer. I could have called it product co product timer, conveyor timer. I could have called it whatever I want. Um, it's all up to the to the user. So if I, for instance, if I just want to let's let me make another just a simple free running timer here. So I will just put in the ladder. I can click on the different tabs to get to the instructions I want to put onto my run. My timer here, I can call it, like I said, anything I want at this point. I'm just going to create a new timer. Give it a preset of whatever. All of the timers in the control objects are based on milliseconds, so 
if I put in a value of 10,000, that's 10,000 milliseconds. So I, I set up my timer, I'm calling it mix timer. I need to create that, so I right click on that. Mix timer, it's gonna be of type timer. I can make an array of timers if I wanted to. In this case, I'm just gonna make one. Say create, and now I can put in whatever preset I want. So if I want it to be a 10 second timer, I'll put in 10 seconds. Now here, uh, if I just want it to be a free running timer, I'll just say mix timer. And then if I hit the little pull down, it will have the done bit right there. And now I've just made a simple free running timer in, in this case. Let me put in one other simple run um, just to show you how to add a new rung and I'm just going to take an input bit and then I'm going to turn on an output. So like I'd done earlier in the IO buffer, I can pick one of those values that I used, conveyor, spelled it wrong, one start. And then have that turn on, just double click in here, whichever output I, I want to turn on. So um, I can go directly to the IO module, which is in slot two, and pick one of those outputs to turn on. And then I'll just save my project here. And now let's go ahead and just download this program really quick. So you'll go to your Who Active here. And this is the processor that I'm connecting to. And then I'll just download the program. I actually changed this to the tag I created in my IO buffer. So now I'm online with the program in remote run mode. And if I want to start this, toggle this bit on, I could force this on. It's actually hooked up to a real world input right now. Then this output would turn on. And you can see how the timer works. It's just a free running timer. It's a 10 second timer. After 10 seconds, the done bit goes on and it recycles the timer. Um, down here, I just have a, a timer going to a counter instruction. So this guy, every time the done bit for this timer goes on, I'm just going to increment the counter. And this is just to show how you can just test the program. These are just two internal bits in the PLC. So if I want to toggle the bit on, toggle the bit off, it shows how the output instruction will work. And here's just kind of showing a comparison instruction that can be an equal to, it can be a less than, greater than, um, whatever you like. And when it gets to this value, I just reset this counter and it continues counting. That's it for this simple program. For more information, contact your local Werner Electric representative. Be sure to check out our Werner Electric YouTube channel for more videos for our automation learning series.